Pasco, Ixity, and Detroit Public Television. We share a mission to send a message. There are fun things to do right here at home. More information at ixity.com. Hi, I'm DJ Oliver, host of Detroit Performs. Tonight, we have a special presentation looking at the Knight Foundation's Detroit Arts Challenge. We hope this documentary will inspire you to share your ideas about creating art in Detroit. Please enjoy Acres of Diamonds. Detroit is a city of culture. So you, you can't have a city that was built on, a blue, on blue collar workers and automakers housing an extraordinary art institute and having the history of Motown and techno and the amazing artists that have come out of this city and not recognize that we have always had remarkable culture here. We did our first show in 1975 when they was playing records. And our last performance was at Shane Park in 2004. That was the last performance from 1975 to 2004. So that's a lot of years from almost nothing to almost something. Because, you know, we were under the radar. We never made the national acclaim, international acclaim. But this story sits here in Detroit and people don't know about it. You know, I, I don't know if they told you, but, you know, we was criminals. So, <laughs> that's why a lot of it took place at night. The early parts of the jit started at night, under a street light, when all the stuff we stole, we had already separated and Freeze. split it with each other. There's nothing else to do but to start slap boxing, right? Oh, what, you serious? And then it gets serious, but then he'll say, hey, let me sh show you this, show me that move you did. Stand right here, and this is at night. He do it, and, he, and my other brother said, you come over, you stand here. Now, do the same move. That's really how it started. One person asking the other guy to stand next to him, and then the other guy, he stand next to me. My brother came home one day and said, yo man, I was walking down the street and I saw some cats on the street like gin. I and mean, we all laughed about it, but I still did not consciously go in my head and think, that's our legacy. All I could think was, wow, they still doing the dance. Still now, they still jit. You know, I walk up the street and see people, look here, you can't jit, and I just look at them and say, you, <laughs> you don't know who walking past you, you know? You really don't know who walking past you. So a mutual friend that we knew for like 20 years gave us a call and said, hey, uh, there's a guy trying to do a movie about Jitten. And I told him, man, you can't do the movie unless you meet the original Jitterbug. I interviewed the Jitterbugs. It was Tracy McGee at the time and Johnny McGee um, at my practice facility in Midtown. And I just pressed record and for like three hours straight, just listened to them tell a story. You know, by the end of that interview, I was like, whoa. It was overwhelming. And I had to commit to it and do it the best of my ability, you know. I knew I had like a, uh, a key position in this and I have to do it a certain way. So in this film, I'm very confident in it, you know, that person watching it, people watching it, that they will take, you know, they will feel the same as I felt. When we met him, we realized that he, together with everybody else in Detroit who does the gym, collectively helped keep the legacy alive. 
So for that, we embrace them. I'm proud of it. I'm like, whoa. If it weren't for the legacy, I wouldn't be sitting right here right today. You know what I mean? We were just having fun. I didn't think that this, this legacy was going to last this long and uh, still pre prevalent today. That's amazing. Um, I felt like, you know, Detroit getting this uh, recognition for this particular dance style and its history, we gotta start at the beginning. And um, I think that will set us a strong, sturdy foundation for everything else, you know? And because a lot of people that's doing the dance, and just like how I was, didn't, you know, see that connection. And, and now that connection will be established, and then we can move forward, you know? This isn't passed over to another generation. And it's, it's not dead, it's still, it's still alive, till the day, and this is like 40 years ago. And it's still today, it's still, I can walk up the street, somebody be jitting. Or standing in front of the store, jitting. You know, it's just it's something, it's something. I think of Detroit in many ways as like a gigantic sound system that one time was making amazing music. But steadily throughout time, people have pulled the plugs out of the instruments and out of the amplifiers. And some of the amplifiers and some of the instruments have gone away. But I think still many of these amazing instruments and these amazing machines for making music and, and for making the music loud and exciting are still there. But it requires people to figure out how to plug them all back in and how to mix them the right way to get to a greater result. My hope for Detroit, I'm back to when I was a kid and it was a hopeful thing. I'm looking into the future, uh, the Knight Foundation, 56 winners, and if we all do what we say we're gonna do with these projects, I weep with excitement to what Detroit could be once again. I knew that Detroit would be home. And I knew that the community here was like, unlike any other community I'd ever experienced. One of the things that we find particularly inspiring about Detroit is that despite the odds, despite the headlines, the city continues to be a creative place. Artists continue to come. Art organizations continue to build themselves and rebuild themselves. The city is really being driven by the culture that surrounds it. It is acres of diamonds. It is about to be reborn. Whip and the lead was strong. That damn hood hooked the wagon down. 